I made pockets. <laughs> These are my 18th century pockets that I made using Brilliant Trowbridge's Sew Along as a guide. I made my own pattern for these pockets. There are also a bunch of free patterns online that you can use to get the shape for the pockets, but the shape is simple enough that you can easily make your own pocket as well so that you can decide how big exactly you want the pockets to be. To make my pattern, I taped two pieces of regular letter-sized paper together, hamburger style so that the longer sides were taped together. I then folded those in half. So I taped them together hamburger style, but then I folded it in half hot dog style. And then I drew out half of the pocket shape and then I cut out the pattern and refined the shape so that it looked how I wanted it to. And then I folded it back in half and cut a slit down the middle. And the slit ended at the halfway point of the pocket shape, like vertically. So this was the shape of my pocket and this is the slit in the front of it. And if I fold this in half, you see that the slit ends right at that halfway point. I used three different fabrics in these pockets. The back is a black cotton flannel, and then there is a white cotton lining on the inside. And then there is the fashion fabric, which is this blue, it's almost teal background and then there are white and black chickens on it. The chicken fabric is a novelty print. It is not historically accurate, but since pockets are typically worn under petticoats, I decided that the chicken fabric would be very fun to use for the pockets. When I saw it in the store, I immediately fell in love with it. And I knew that this was the fabric that I was going to be making my pockets out of regardless of historical accuracy. So to put the pockets together, again, I followed Burnley and Trowbridge. So I will link their video down below. I think it's in two or three parts. So I'll link the first part and then you should easily be able to find the second and third part from that. So to put the pockets together, I cut out the pattern and you only want to cut the slit in the front pieces of the pocket. So the back, there's no slit in the back. So I just cut the slit into the fashion fabric and the white lining. And then after that, I laid all of the pieces on top of each other and I basted them all together so that they wouldn't move. And you want to baste well, I basted my fabric together pretty close to the edge, so that way when I put the binding on, I wouldn't have to remove it. My basting stitches are still underneath this binding. The binding, by the way, is the next and potentially the last step. I had an extra step just because I made a pair of pockets, so I'll explain what that extra step was later. But after you baste the fabric together, you will want to sew on the binding. I used a red cotton binding, which I got off of Etsy. It's made out of Kona cotton. I will put a link below to the Etsy seller who I got this cotton binding from. It is a bias tape binding. So going around the corners was easier. Still, it was a little difficult. So you'll see, I think I did pretty good around the rounded corners at the bottom, but this bottom part of the slit, it's not perfect on either of the pockets. As you'll see, it kind of sticks up <laughs> a little bit, but that's fine. Again, these pockets are gonna be underneath all of the petticoats and skirts. So it's fine that the binding is imperfect. And it also just, it makes it easier to 
reach my hand into the pockets anyway, so. It's fine, it's not perfect, but I'm still proud of it. So sewing the binding definitely is the longest part of making the pockets. I put binding around the edges first and then the slit and then the top, which you can't actually see the binding that I put on the top because after I sewed binding on the top, I then found some other red cotton fabric that I had. I cut out rectangles that were the same width as the top of the pocket. I felled down all of the raw edges and then I whip stitched these rectangle panels onto the top of the pocket, front and back. And that just leaves a channel at the top so that I can put a waistband through the pockets. If you want to just make one pocket, you can totally use the bias tape or you can bind the top edge with a ribbon and just have the ribbon go off both ends and be your waistband so that the waistband is sewn directly onto the pocket. Since I was making a pair of pockets and I didn't want to worry about finding a permanent placement for these pockets, I decided to improvise this little channel at the top so that way I could just add a separate waistband and have the pockets be movable and that way I can interchange them. If I make more pockets, I can mix and match. Or I could only wear one pocket if I wanted to that way as well. After these little rectangles were sewn on, the pockets are now complete. And I have two 18th century pockets of my very own. I don't have waistband yet. I'm going to order some off of Burnley and Trowbridge's website. However, my next project is making 18th century stays. So I figured once I get to a point where I figure out what type of boning I need, I could just order that off of Burnley and Trowbridge as well. So I figured I would just wait to order both of those items at the same time instead of just ordering a few yards of tape for a waistband and then ordering boning later. I could just order them at the same time. So my pockets do not have a waistband, but besides that, they are done. <laughs> pockets are a simple project that are good for beginners if you want to start a historical costuming journey i think 18th century pockets would be a very good place to start it's a good way to practice your hand sewing skills all of this i sewed by hand it's really just a bunch of whip stitches so you can get a bunch of practice in making those even and look neat yeah, I don't know how helpful this video is going to be, but I just wanted to share my pockets with you and explain how I made them. And again, I will link the Burnley and Trowbridge sew along in the description. That video is going to be way more helpful to you in making your own pair of 18th century pockets. I guess the only other thing that I have to say is if you make your own pockets, don't be afraid to go beyond historical accuracy. I made mine using chicken fabric from the 21st century and they are so cute. So just make your pockets out of any fabric that you want because who really cares? <laughs> it's called historical costuming and I think the costuming part is more important. I think pockets are a great way to show your own personal style and what sort of patterns and colors that you like. So definitely don't be afraid to use whatever fabric that you have to make your pockets. Yeah, that's all I have to say in this video. I hope all of you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.